Hello, welcome back. It's Garage Talk with Garage Guy Chase and Dale Tanhart. Today, we are joined by a man who's been on a journey in life through racing wheels, speed, and super trucks, uh, but not just super trucks, a lot of other types of racing vehicles. It's Parker Klagerman. He's here. He is the, uh, the newly announced driver of the number 48 NASCAR Xfinity Series uh, vehicle with Big Machine Racing. We're excited. We're excited for Parker. It's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun garage talk. We've got a lot of uh, things to, to dive into, and uh, we, we're, we're glad that you're here. Before we get rolling, I got to just to let you and remind you, you know, it's almost Christmas time. Uh, when I think about Christmas, I think about Hooters. There's nothing, you know, better to, to just pair Christmas with than a nice Hooters meal. And if you use promo code garage guys, you can save $10 on any $30 or more order when you order off the Hooters app or from Hooters to go.com. Um, I, I got fine print Dale. If, if you have anything to say, I'm going to say fine print Parker. Are you a fan of fine print? Sure. Yeah. All right. Why not? Let's do go it. for it. Valid participating locations for delivery and carry out orders only $30 or more. That and was... don't forget, mm -hmm. don't forget too. While, while we're here, while we're still talking about Hooters, limited time only items you can get at Hooters. Feel the love. Christmas is a loving time of year. You got to feel the love with, with Hooters. And you can feel the love with these limited time only items. Texas style quesadillas, the Diablo burger, if you're a big spice guy. Daytona Beach BLT and Sloppy Joe Sliders. That's the one that, that still gets me. I got to try the Sloppy Joe Sliders. Limited time only items that you can pair up with promo code Garage Guys at your local Hooters. So try it out and, and have a loving time at Hooters this Christmas. That was a little air kiss. When I think about Sloppy Joe, are you a, Parker, let's we'll start this off. Are, yep, are, you, yep. are you a fan of Billy Madison? Are you an Adam Sandler guy? Definitely. Thank you for having me on, okay. by the way. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm I am glad that you're here and I'm excited. We've been waiting on this one for a long time. I was just gonna say have some more sloppy joes. Great movie, great quote. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, Parker, we so for anybody that doesn't know in the garage fam, we met Parker in Nashville for the first time. We were in the middle of filming a uh uh I guess it was just our race preview show for Nashville. Parker's just like strolling by and we're like, Hey Parker, hey, come here, come here. And like that was literally how we met. We had no <laughs> it was. communication beforehand. We were just like, Hey, yeah, come here. He hops on the show and we're talking about the super truck series. Parker was racing in the truck series still. And I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to be doing a little more. Are you going to be doing some more truck stuff or is it just full-time yeah, yeah. this year? No, full-time Xfinity. And then we're going to do 10 to 12 uh, truck races with Henderson. So I've got a packed schedule, man. I've gone from my most races in the last 10 years has been like 19 in a year to I've got 43 planned for next year. So I would say, um, yeah, it's going to be busy. Yeah, <laughs> Two of those Two of those are my to my girlfriend's despair. Two of the off weekends we have in Xfinity are in the springtime. One is Bristol Dirt. I'll be doing the truck race, and one is North Wilkesboro. I'll be doing that truck race. So I'm Love just it. full in on racing every weekend. Love it though, dude. Oh yeah, talk about throwbacks. We got North Wilkesboro back on the schedule. Every no, like literally every yep. race fan cannot absolutely wait for that weekend. Uh, <laughs> but talking about another throwback craftsman is back and i think it's funny how chase talked about that opened up with how how we met was during that and we talked about like nostalgic truck series shit basically um what is the nostalgia factor for you knowing that craftsman is back which a premier sponsor i don't think has ever come back as a premier sponsor once they left yeah. in, this, in the history of nascar so that's a bigger deal than i think people are making about it and I just want to know your thoughts, like growing up as a NASCAR fan, as a kid, like seeing Craftsman back at the helm of the truck series, where it belongs. Dude, I think it's so cool. And I know you guys, you love the term super truck series, which I love. And we've been, on, us three have been on that for a while, right? Of trying. And I thought there was a chance. I was putting it out there on social media when I heard, you know, Camp World's leaving. And I'm like, or at Gander Outdoors, I'm like, all right, this is the chance. You put it out there. It's the chance. Craftsman super truck series. We didn't get the super in there, but we got Craftsman back. And I, I think it's cool. I mean, it's what I grew up watching. You know, by the time I got to the truck series, it had just shifted over to the Camp World Series. Um, so I missed ever doing a Craftsman truck race. I've always been uh, under the crap Camp World or Gander Outdoors, um, you know, sort of title. So I think it's awesome. I think it fits. You know, it's it's it fits the demographic of people that watch trucks. They like to wrench on stuff. And, you know, I think Craftsman – 
just is so synonymous with that idea of saying the Craftsman Truck Series. It's so easy to say. It's so simple. It you know just gels. So Trucks I love it. Tools. I can't wait. Let's do it. Yeah, I can't wait to be in those races though. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and bringing back North Wilkesboro with Craftsman as the title sponsor. You've got you know you've got IRP, which is Lucas Oil Raceway now. I mean, you've got some of these short tracks that Truck Series was really you know built on. And I just think that's really cool for it to lean into that and continue doing that. Did you have a favorite truck driver growing up? Just, just oh. I, I, I was a big Dennis Setzer guy when I was a kid because I loved the way that number 46 looked. But I want to know. That's, a, that's I have to know who, who the truck guy was for Parker Kligerman. You know, that's interesting. So I loved that truck as well. I loved that truck. Um, I want to say like Johnny Benson is one that sticks out to me when he was in the truck series for every reason. I know that was a little later, but I loved – him there um i mean todd bodine i feel like i was just always watching todd bodine the truck series and just be like that's the guy and then i became friends with him he's a great guy um but like when i think truck series i think todd bodine and ron horday i mean at the end of the day ron horday is just coolest dude he uh from the first day i drove a truck to the last time he raced and i believe i was in one of those races um you know he was just always such a cool guy so, and still this day he'll come up middle of the garage i hadn't seen him in years you know, hit me in the back and be like, Hey, what's going on, man? I'm like, this guy never changes. Uh, but he was awesome as well. And I think like truck series to me is Ron Hornaday. It's Todd Bodine. It's those guys that were, they were, you know, they were some of those racers that you don't see in any other form of racing other than American stock car racing, which is that you can make a living and be at a really high, make a really great living in a third series, right? Like that just doesn't happen anywhere else, but in stock cars, it does. It's really cool to see. Hell yeah. I love that. I, for me, you know, I learned a lot about the old days of the truck series as I was older. So I was kind of just like a big Jack Sprague guy for vibes. Um, mm. Big must mustache guy, you know, so 75 just, truck, right? Mm -hmm, I was there for that. It was just, just Quaker state. What was it? He was with uh Quaker state it, was 24. Yeah. The 24 is what I'm thinking. Got it. I'm thinking of, he was in the, wasn't he in the spear 75 truck? That uh, Harvick drove also at some point. I'd be uh, lying at that point I if I told you. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I don't know. I, I, might, be I might be stretching here. I think David <laughs> wasn't um, 75. Was David Starr in that truck too at some point? Oh, I maybe. Think, maybe I think. later. I think later, yeah. I'm gonna, um, I, I am going to look this up because I have the internet at my hands. And why he's will, doing that, I will say the Ron Hornaday Longhorn. Truck. dude i just want a shirt mm. i want that on a shirt more than anything because like there's not you know i've been fortunate to find you know i think i have the skinner uh truck you know on on my shirt the rcr the number three he's got the same and so yeah for a todd bodine i'm just i'm still looking for the tabasco hot sauce car shirt with that <laughs> like you can't find that anywhere you know what i'm saying yeah the pontiac yeah. the hot pontiac but um, I fell in love with Todd Bodine a couple of years ago, just watching him talking about gambling. He just, we're in Las Vegas. We're going to do a little gambling. All right. Like I made a whole video about it. It was incredible. Like I, the, the guy's energy is, is just contagious. So I do love to hear that. But yeah, but now going to Xfinity, man. I mean, I remember last year you got a win, which was huge. You to, for you to win at mid Ohio. I'll never forget. We were in Atlanta for that race. Um, I think Dale, I think Dale had bet on, I don't, who did you bet on for that one, Dale? Do you remember that race? Spring Atlanta trucks or Xfinity? I'm talking mid Ohio. When we, oh, they were racing mid Ohio. Oh, dude. Right? Oh, I had to bring it up. Right, yeah. I have to. We, yeah, we do have to talk about this. Um, it was, so a goal for us next year is to film my reactions when I lose. Like we always film our reactions when we win bets. Yep. Um, but I, I have meltdowns because I'm just very competitive and I'm a washed up C minus athlete. And uh, when you won at Mid Ohio, we were driving to was it Atlanta? We were driving to the track, yeah. We you stopped at a gas Atlanta. station, dude. Parker, I, I look, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of yours, but I, you got to be fair when money's on the line here. Yeah, yep. and uh, I I did have you for a top five. I was like, Parker's gonna get a top five. I think you were still plus money when I bet that. I had Zane Smith for a top three. I had a matchup that that lost in the last lap because somebody got spun out, and I can't remember who it was. But I had the, the fucking retirement fund on Zane Smith to win that race. And, and <laughs> in the fashion that he he hounded and hounded and hounded you like 
for five, six, seven laps, dude. And those laps are long at Mid-Ohio, right? So when he couldn't pass you, I yelled. And I actually, uh, we were in the car. Beat and we the were in shit traffic. out of your radio. I punched my radio twice and my knuckles were bleeding. And I scared the shit out of Chase with that, dude. Chase is like, dude, like. Cause I'm not I, much just, of a, I mean, I've seen people get angry. All right. Dude, I've been angry. We were, myself. Wa- we were watching it. We were watching it but on our dude. phone too. Like, Oh, and like, I don't like later. Jack Nicholson and he was Adam Sandler at that moment. And, you know, I just wanted to help him with the ooze. Bye bye. You know, five minutes. I'm later, sorry. I was I'm happy sorry. For you. Look, you yeah, no, I was yeah, I, I, like five <laughs> minutes later. I was like, I'm happy for Parker. I am like, <laughs> yeah. God, a lot of after not no. saying a word for like five minutes just utter silence like, pull in you know i'm happy for parker he just parks the car just, just slides it up in the park and we get out and we just go oh that uh, it was one. great i love it no that was a, it was a fantastic you. dub though man and i mean like that i really feel like that along with you know the opportunities that you got the rest of the year like that's what's got you here i'm just excited to see you back full time again it's gonna be cool to see you in the garage more often and it's just been good yeah. to just kind of like slowly start kind of piecing together that relationship with you you know when we're at the trash getting to talk about things like that and whatnot and it just kind of leads me into this whole journey that you've been on dude i mean like you have you have been in this game since like what oh nine i believe is when you kind of like came in on the scene dude i was a junior in high school bro like you had just graduated (laughs) high school probably yeah like we're only a year apart so i mean just talk talking through that i mean I, i did some research i know you're from connecticut Looking back, I mean, where did you start racing? Like, what was the yep. original foundation of that for you? So, for me, I started, well, first of all, I was into cars as a kid. And then I saw racing on TV because we got Speed Vision, which it was at the time in 1999, when I was nine years old. And I saw racing. I actually saw Formula One first. And I was like, whoa, what is that? I need to be doing it. And my parents had no connection to racing or cars. My, no one in my family had it. So it was really like, what the heck is this kid talking about? Um, and then four years later, we're moving towns. And after just incessantly talking about it, you know, for four years, my mom was like, okay, what does it take to go go-kart racing? And so I went on the internet, of course, and like figured it all out and realized right down the street from where we moved, there was a, a karting association um in this parking lot by the beach and they did it every saturday in the spring in the fall it called norwalk karting association started racing there my mom helped me get going and um you know i started i met great people who helped me out um i did a lot of mechanic stuff myself and then just slowly moved my way through to winning and then fought for a championship and i turned to my dad when i was like 15 and i was like look help me go to cars for one year and if you do that, I'll do the rest, which is a ridiculous notion because financially this is a really hard sport. But I wanted to go to Formula One at the time, so we go and do open wheel. I win my first couple races, win the most races, win the championship. And my dad was like, good job, you're on your own. Um, had yeah. no money, couldn't go to Europe. <laughs> so I tried to go to Europe with no money. That doesn't work. Uh, it's, it's tough to go to Europe with a lot of money. It's really – well, it's impossible without any money. So yeah. um, my dad, to his credit, even though he wasn't a, a huge fan of the racing stuff, was like, hey, what about NASCAR? And I had watched NASCAR. I loved it. I watched it. In, I watched every day or every weekend, all the races. Obviously, it was on Speed Channel constantly. And so I, uh, I went down that path and got an opportunity to USAC Midgets. And one thing led to another. And before I knew it, within like two years, I signed with Penske. And so it was wow. a totally different path from that moment. Um, did ARCA, made my first NASCAR start in 09 at uh, Kansas in the Xfinity Series, won the pole, beat Kyle Busch. Remember thinking, well, this isn't that hard. I mean, we'll be in Cup in a week. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, damn, this shit ain't hard. <laughs> um, yeah, but then reality hit. I finished uh, 16th on that day, and then later that year, we did the second start. I hit the wall and qualified and missed the race. So <laughs> I had the highest man. of highs, the lowest lows. And then from that point, man, I mean, you talked about it. I've jumped around. You know, I did the truck series when I was hoping to go full time Xfinity. Um, you know, I I thought you know being at Penske was kind of like the you know development to eventually being a Cup driver. But in that era of development drivers, you know, one we had the the Great Recession going on, which made it really tough to get any opportunities, and then two, 
you know, when I look back, I feel like I was highly immature, you know, just sort of probably not prepared or ready for that opportunity. Um, but I, I had the skills. It's just, you know, for the level of opportunity that I would have gotten there in terms of going full time. And even though I had results, I don't know if like personally, they probably read that right. I wasn't ready for it. I don't know. Um, maybe I would have figured it out if I got it, but from there, you know, just jumped around and different, you know, took different opportunities. And then when Swan folded, when I eventually got to cup, I was pretty frustrated at the time anyway, with the sport, I was being offered some like sort of back end stuff. And so I got this call from NBC and it just was like, Hey, would you like to come do TV? And I was like, well, where are you guys at? And they're like, Stanford, Connecticut. And I was like, that's where I'm from. I literally grew up there. <laughs> and so I just packed my stuff, put everything else in storage and went to North and thought like I'd do TV for a little bit and I'd be back full time by the end of the year. And then I, you know, I turned around seven years later, I'd done this part-time and part-time racing, part-time TV. And, and that's why when big machine racing came to me um, and Scott Borchetta, you know, one of his first questions was like, Hey, do you still want to do this full-time? And I was like, Yes. I, and he was like, that was quick. And I was like, well, well, you know, I've been doing this because I felt like I could get back here. Right. And I was good enough. And I, and at two years prior to this opportunity, you know, in 2020, I thought potentially I was done racing. So like I had no ride, the cup ride was gone. The Henderson's uh, were going to, you know, shut down the truck team and I had no sponsors. And so I pretty much on that day was like, all right, this is over this, you know, whole journey, this, this thing I've only wanted to do my whole life um, is done. And it, it got decided for me. And then I got the opportunity to come back. And from that moment on, it's just felt like an upward trajectory of, you know, basically being very grateful to be here, grateful to have the opportunity. And with that, my performance has just been at a, a level I didn't even know I had. And so I felt yeah. like if I didn't take this full-time opportunity, it was going to be one of those things where, you know, it'd be a terrible thing to waste having, where I feel like I'm driving the best I ever have ever and to not go out there and be racing every weekend. So I'll find out, you know, we're 43 weeks, basically, if, uh, if I, if I'm really am driving at the highest level, I believe, and you know, the, the level that I believe I am, but I'm ready for the opportunity. And, and, you know, it's, it's funny. People like say it's like a second chance, but I hate that term. It's so cliche because to me, this is actually where, you know, the last time I went full-time Xfinity, I was 20, two years old, 23 years old. Yeah. And people always say like, man, if I could do that again, what would I know now? And I'm like, well, shit, I'm getting the chance to do it again with everything I know now. So we'll see uh, if, you know, we'll see if I'm successful with that, but I really believe I can be. And so I know it's a long-winded answer to explain how I got here, but it has been a journey for sure. And I, uh, I don't, I like to say I wouldn't change it for the world. Maybe there's some things I would change, but you know what? I've ended up where I want to be. So, it, you know, no, that matters. Dude, yeah, no regrets, man. I, I love all of that, though, dude. Like, just I, just, I mean, I just literally found out so much about, like, your beginning. <laughs> I feel like I didn't even know. And so to know that you didn't come from a racing family and stuff like that, I I love that, dude. So, like, it, it just how it all spiraled out. Like, yeah, not a second chance. You grinded your ass off, dude. I mean, I'll watch how you work, dude. I mean, it's just – it's it's a hustle. Appreciate dude. it. And it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a concept people don't get, man. People don't see what it really goes down behind the scenes. They they just see what they got at the forefront, and then that's that's it. They don't understand how hard people put into their craft, man. So I love. What do they, they, what they say? What do they say? It's like uh, the ten year overnight success or the twenty year overnight success sort of yeah. thing. Like, yeah, they don't. All you see is the, the good part, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, man, I tell you, there were some dark, dark moments, you know, where I was doing the TV thing, which I was very grateful for. It was a huge opportunity, but it was like. At times I'm doing this TV thing and obviously grateful to have that opportunity to be, to do it at a high level and, and, you know, feel confident doing it and, you know, get great respect from the fans. But there was times I was standing there on pit road and I never felt further from driving. Right. And like would sit there just being like, there's no way this is like how this ends. Like I, I can't let it do, I can't let yeah. it end this way. It's right? not real. And so it's going to be yeah. my reality. You know? I was like this, why am I, why am I doing that? So I, uh, I'm just, you know, I, but you've said it, it just takes hard work. It takes, you know, breakthroughs and really just pushing a rock up a hill. Like at the end of the day, that's all this is. It's like life is, you just got to push that rock up the hill consistently. And consistency is like, to me, the thing I've lacked a lot of my life to have more things be successful. But when I am consistent with things, it's like 
you know, trying to be a driver, I find that there's just, there's almost nothing that will stop you. Um, if you just find a way to be consistent. What's crazy. And what people don't understand about this, like, Comparing to all professional sports, like how often, and this isn't something that's mutually ex exclusive to NASCAR. It's certainly more possible with NASCAR and auto racing because the different kind of toll that your body would take uh, compared to some stick and ball sports. But how rare is it that somebody goes full time in any professional sport? Basically, I won't say fall out because you hung around, you hung around and, and had some opportunities uh, at a part time basis, but to go full-time in a sport, then that's, you've been relegated out of that for eight years, right? Like six, <laughs> seven, eight years. And now you're back full almost time. 10. You know how rare, like that is people got to understand how rare that is for that to happen. And it's not like it just happened out of just, you know, out of thin air, out of luck. Like we talked about, you work for it, but that opportunity has come partially to Henderson motorsports, the number 75 truck, which uh, Awesome paint schemes, by the way. I have to say, always looks so damn good <laughs> on the track, and it's exciting. Thank to hear you. That you'll be, it's all, it's exciting to hear that you'll be back in that truck because a uh, big truck guy, big truck guys here, at garage guys, and and uh, it's also my uh, quick brag since we shit on me earlier for the you know punch the radio incident. <laughs> it's my best betting performance in in all NASCAR national series, so I got to throw is. that in there. But talk about Henderson, like what that has meant to you, the increased just better performance year by year by year, three wins. I mean, it's been, it's been really fun to see. I just want to know like how that all came together and continue to stay together through yep. all these years and, and get you to where you are now. And you said it, man, you know, they are the reason and it's Charlie and Don Henderson, the whole Henderson family, the food country USA and all the 500 employees that work for them and those grocery stores. And then Chris Carrier, who's the crew chief, you know, Chris and I, got linked up together when I was just first getting an ARCA when he was at Penske and I joined Penske. He became my crew chief. We won nine races together there. We had, you know, we won that pole together in Xfinity. We got split up for a couple of years. We always wanted to come back together. We always said that. And when I was kind of bouncing around rides there in 2016, I drove that 92 truck for a while. The Hendersons were just entering the truck series. He came to me and just said, Hey, would you be up for doing a couple races and just evaluating our stuff at least? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we actually missed the race to Talladega the first time I got in that truck. And I think, you know, the Hendersons were all horrified and whatever. And I was like, no, 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 I like you, you know, you, you can tell good people right away. I was like, I like you guys. And I trust Chris. We'll figure this out. We went on to miss uh, Daytona the next, <laughs> the, into the next year because we had a mechanical issue. But then when we went to Atlanta by the, in 2017, I was like, this truck is awesome. And we ended up winning our last race of that year in Talladega. Um, and ever since, you know, it's just been a bond and a friendship and a family that has supported me at such a high level. Um, and, you know, we've, I've done everything I can to help them um, on track and off track. I know, you know, they know that they've done the same for me. Chris Carrier, you know, is a magician, as I like to say, in terms of being a one man band and being able to do what he does. And I think, you know, for the last couple of years, we came back in 2020. It was like, they made the same pact I did, which was like, we we're going to enjoy this and we're going to do it at a high level. And we're just going to try and get better. And from the first race back in 2020 at Pocono, we have just been on a linear path and progression upwards to getting better to winning at mid Ohio. And just, you know, just any time I show up in that truck right now with where we've gotten this race team and the support that Charlie and Don Henderson give us, it just feels like, Hey, we are going to have a chance to win. Or if we don't, we're going to run top 10. And it's like, okay, that's where you're, you know, you're doing the right things to where even on your bad days, you're going to be top 10, then you're going to find yourself winning more than just one race. Um, and I, you know, look at our average finish this year. We were 9.2 average finish. If we, if you take out getting run out of fuel at Coda running second and um, get spun out in Nashville, you know, that's probably in the eights, which would put us right with Zane Smith who won the championship. So, I mean, it's very impressive for a small race team that does this probably on a, a third of the budget of uh, the larger race teams. I do they have an, a big one? Do they have endeavors to run full time at some point with whether it's with you or with anybody? Cause they do have good race trucks. Like man, they bring good trucks to the track. We have tried every since coming back in 2020. I think we've tried each year. Um, and we had talked about it before that, you know, back in 2018, we talked about it 2019. Um, 
I think the closest we came probably was this off season. And, you know, unfortunately some things just didn't pan out. And it was funny that the 48 came along because, you know, it just sort of worked out at the time that it wasn't really going to pan out with us being able to go full-time with the 75 truck. This came along for me to go full-time Xfinity and still do what I do with the, the 75, which is race our 10 to 12 races and go try and win. Right. And for me, that's like the best of both worlds. Um, although I would have loved to have been full-time in the 75 and just think that would have been such a cool experience. You know, we've run half the races, so we're pretty close to that. But, you know, people ask like, well, why couldn't you just do the other half? And it's like, it's not even that it doubles in cost for us. <laughs> it's like a triple or quadruple, man. Like it's not the way we do it. We, if you look, we spread those races out. We spread them out maybe by a month or more at a time. Because that's where Chris Carrier knows he can do the things that it takes to that when we show up, that truck is well prepared and able to win, right? And that's where I think it's just we would be so hesitant to go full time if we couldn't do this, get that same level of preparation and bring the same level of speed. So that's what always been the hurdle for us is it's not just doubling our our budget, it's tripling or quadrupling. And you know, that's a really hard thing to do. I'm actually just grateful we've been as close as we have been. Um, and, you know, even just to go from where we were, we were doing seven races in 2017 to we're doing 12 now. And like, we, we don't, and we used to say like, we'll do seven to 10. Now we say 10 to 12. Cause it's like, you know, we're actually, we can do this. So it's, it's just cool in that sense. And um, you know, I, my, my hope for the Hendersons in that 75 truck is to get to the most wins they've ever had as a driver. I think I got to, I got to get one more or two more now to beat Rick Wilson. So um, we'll see. We'll, we're working in. towards it, but I'm, I'm, I would love to get there. I just penciled Rick that Wilson. in. I think the one more race thing is uh, is very doable. So yeah, this is Rick this Wilson's has been up. Hold on, hold on. One thing. What? Rick Wilson. What? I'm, that name. I'm trying to figure. Did he drive for Richard <laughs> Petty one year? Did. did I oh, think. you're testing me, man. But I know he was. I'm he trying was, to think of that name. I feel like we don't have computer brains, bro. I don't want to look this one up. <laughs> I we, think we he, don't have. Think, he was fast. Google him. I think he went to drive. I think he drove after Richard Petty retired for a year, maybe in the 44 or something. Mm, that is definitely that could be a possibility. I know. You know, he did Random some full time. He did. I think he was the last full time season for the Hendersons when they ran the Bush series. So that would have been 89 and 90. I want to say that he won those races. He won like Dover and he won Bristol. That is one other thing I should say this year coming up. I'm going to win at Bristol. I don't care if it's on dirt or concrete. We are going to win at Bristol. And when the 70 tribe 75 truck wins at Bristol or even when we win the 48 car, uh, just know the party will be immense so we that will be i'll bring cigars to usa's track we'll up be that there night. thank you we'll be there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right wow parker Klegerman calling his shot i love calling it. a shot love to win at bristol bring i will win at cigars. bristol this year i've wait, been wait, so wait. damn close in that place in every series i just can't imagine i i think i finished top five like multiple times top threes in trucks and xfinity and i so bet I'm on you like at the point where i'm like all right I bet on you for a top five at the fall race. And I think you got top five. So that we need cool. t-shirts. We'll be at Bristol. We're going to, we're, we're all there. <laughs> Big machine boys. That's going to be us. Love it. Love at it. Bristol. So we've had, we've had very uplifting talks. This has probably been one of the most uplifting. I love everything about the grind. I'm a big grind. I'm same from humble beginnings, from nothing to something, you know, like that's the story, yep. you know? And and so hearing that you, you know, started out loving F1, you know, it kind of just brings me into, you know, the, this next thing, you know, you're, you're a NASCAR driver, Par Parker, you know, you're, you're a NASCAR driver. Okay. And, uh, you know, I've been seeing you do a lot of F1 videos recently and, and I have to ask the question, are you a Netflix subscriber? I actually am probably one of the earliest Netflix subscribers in the United States. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Probably. probably you don't, you don't want to know about that story. Before Speed Vision? Uh, Let's hear nope. it. After, you had early access? After Speed Vision. Man, hmm. I was on that deal so early when they went to the streaming deal that I remember telling someone about it. And they're like, what do you mean you watch? shows on the internet <laughs> i think it had to be like time. 
Like I had to be 09, 08. I don't remember when they launched. I was still ordering DVDs. They launched. I think yeah. they launched. Yeah. See, they launched like five years before that. But they were like, weren't they well, like a mail-in DVD service? Yeah, they were mail-in. I'm talking about like yeah. the second the streaming service first came up, which would have been like 09, 2010. I just remember having it so early. People didn't know what the hell I was talking about. 2011 and, is what I remember because Blockbuster tried to do the same mm, thing. Interesting. Didn't interesting. Work. Well, I, then I, I'm i telling you, it was right around that time. And the funniest part about that deal was that's when like it was just starting. So everyone wanted the login. And at the time, it was like seven bucks a month. And yeah. I remember my my brothers were on it, my sister, my mom, my dad were all on my account. And I, they were one time I was racing and they couldn't log in. They're like, "What the fuck, dude?" <laughs> Sorry for the language. And you're good. No, that's and you, I'm you're like, acceptable I'm like, here. Yes. All I wrote back was, "It's seven dollars." <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You, so, you need to get this now. Yeah. And now it's like yeah. a thing. Like somebody has been on my HBO Max lately, so I made an account called Not Chase. So that I can watch because oh. it, it does this weird stuff. I, I don't understand. It. <laughs> so um, I, I kept dude, thinking I, it was you because it was I see South Park all the time. Dude, I, the, the Netflix thing is hilarious because like I'm pretty sure if I don't get on Netflix a lot, but if I do, it's not on my account. It's not on my account. Like yeah. people will not make their own accounts. And the funniest <laughs> thing ever, one of my friends, all right, this is, this is it's kind of messed up, but it's hilarious. There was this kid that went to our high school and one of my friends used to, I, I hate to say it. He bullied him. He did bully him. He did hundred percent. He, he's an oh, adult it's now. It's all changed. Uh, we were in high school. We were kids. He bullied him. And uh, like six years after high school, he log he was still logging into this kid's Netflix account. Like six years later, he was still on his Netflix and he acted like it was the most nonchalant thing ever. I was like, Dude, what the? F That's messed up, dude. But it was bro. It says you twenty dollars a month. What it's, are you it's, that, yeah. it's that. It's yeah. that. I'm not paying seven dollars. I'm, I'm. Yeah. I'm gonna use this login. Well, now they've raised it. Yeah, it's like yeah, twenty two. Yeah. They're bucks trying to crack now. down. Yeah, dude, I, see, I paid yeah. for it for the dad. Well, anyway, aside from that, okay. Really funny. I, I, really I don't know if you're watching the Drive to Survive or anything like that, but let's be fair. I have myself gotten a little bit into F1. I'm not a uh, a watcher of the Netflix show, but I've just gotten into it just because of the appeal, right? Like, I love the way the car looks. I love cars going fast. I'm a big put the headbuds in, don't listen to any call, listen to music, watch cars go. That's me. And so I wanted to ask you, do you think we're ever going to get a weekend where we have Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR all together for one event because we all want to bring auto racing to the top ttt yep. all the way yep okay that i feel like that has to happen and if that happens that could be the thing that it seals the deal man i think i love when indycar and nascar did it yeah. when we've done it in indianapolis right that was so cool the vibe was so cool it just has like this feel of like Everyone's just excited to be there. It, it, I know it hasn't been like the biggest crowd per se that showed up for that, but I feel like the people that did, they're so excited to be there because they're like you and I, which is like, I just love cars going fast. This is so cool. And this is the top level of American auto racing all together one weekend. How can you not like this? Right. Yeah. Um, and I just think that was the vibe was cool. And for the racers, it was cool. It was cool jumping over to the, the IndyCar paddock and then they're over in the NASCAR garage and vice versa. And it just like, everyone was just experiencing each other's sport. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, the funny thing is there was still a little bit of like, Oh, we're on Saturday NASCAR's on Sunday sort of thing. And so what I worry with F1 and where I think there's a huge leap is that, you know, they, you know, they obviously are the largest motorsport in the world. Um, they have the growth in America right now. And with that momentum, they don't really, you know, I feel like they could potentially view it as helping the other American motorsports more than they're gaining from it. Right. Doing something like that. Ego I boys. think NASCAR. Yeah. Well, I think NASCAR going to street courses, this is a big leap in that direction, uh, for IndyCar and NASCAR to be able to do things together for formula one, which is obviously, becoming heavily street course based because it's an incredible moneymaker. And I think, you know, I, I love F1. And I love the growth of F1 in America because I believe that if you suddenly like cars going in circles, whether they're going like this and they have big wings on them, I have a far easier chance of making you like cars that go in circles 
well, in ovals, uh, than if you just like football, right? Or you just like yeah. soccer. So I think this is big for motorsports in America. I think NASCAR and IndyCar are sitting in a great position to, to you know, have a lot of, uh, you know, rising tide raises all boats, but have a lot of momentum from F1's momentum in America. So I, and I, I think with that, like, Maybe keeping it a little bit separate for now. Let not, let F1 do what they're doing in America, investing heavily in Vegas. They're starting that center there. They've got, you know, they're taking a really strong foothold here. But I don't see that as a predatory, scary thing because they can only race so many times, right? Three yeah. times is probably the max they're going to race in any country in the world. They've never really done this before. I feel like they're at their max. So from here, they're going to, if they want to continue to infiltrate, they're going to have to become friendly with NASCAR, with IndyCar, because otherwise their ceiling is going to be where they're at. Um, and so I think that could be the opportunity where NASCAR and IndyCar are sitting there already doing big things in a, in a big way, but say an F1 saying, hey, you know what? Let's work together because I think this could help all of us. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I give I give F1 like a lot of flack, not like F1 in particular, but the documentary, like the fans that, the <laughs> Drive to Survive fans, right? Like I've actually been watching F1 since I was a kid. Since I was like nine or yep. 10 years old. And I've always enjoyed it to a certain extent. Um, I do like close racing better. Like nat- NASCAR's always kind of had naturally close racing compared to what F1 has. But I agree with you that I think Formula One can massively contribute to the growth of NASCAR and, and hopefully IndyCar as well. I don't ever see that happening. I think I love what you said about like, you know, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing. There's no way F1 would ever want to race on a Saturday and let NASCAR race on a Sunday. I feel like maybe NASCAR, especially if if we're in the United States, NASCAR may not want to race on a Saturday and let F1. I feel like that would be kind of a dispute. Complex. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think it would be so awesome if that, if that happened though. And and that is a great point about like, one thing we do at garage guys is we work really hard at turning stick and ball sports guys and girls into racing fans. I never thought about that, that that is advantageous. It is easier. All these new people that have been, become attracted to Formula One through open uh, through the documentary, through Drive to Survive and everything, it, it, it would be way easier to convert them into NASCAR fans because they're already fascinated by motorsport. That's a really good you know, point to think about. You know how I know it's a possibility? Because I am a great example of this. So I found Formula One first. That was the first thing I found in racing. I was like, wow, that's the coolest thing ever. I want to be doing that, so on and so forth. But what happened was back in 2000, 1999, 2001, there was only like 16 F1 races a year. And obviously NASCAR is booming at the time. And I just naturally started watching NASCAR because I wanted more racing. So it was like I found Formula 1, but then I was like, this is awesome. I love motorsports. I love this racing thing. Oh, wait, there's more of it. Oh, there's this NASCAR thing. They race like every weekend. Wait, why don't I watch that? And so it's like, you know, that just became natural for me because I liked racing. Then I found IndyCar and Kart and all that because it was once again, just like, I want more of this. I think there's a possibility of that occurring. And, you know, the, the X factors, how many, what percentage of all these new drive survive fans and people who find Formula one are going to suddenly get that same urge of like, I need to watch more racing. Okay. There's no F1, but there's NASCAR um, or there's IndyCar. I got to check out the Indy 500. I don't know. I think we've already started to see some of it, but you know, IndyCar had a good year. I think NASCAR had obviously an uptick in ratings and such. So you, you have to think naturally some of that could be from that, that group. Um, and I've seen it in some of my fa- my friends who became Formula One fans who drive survive who are now asking me NASCAR questions, Daytona 500 questions. Like, wait a second. So, the what's the biggest race? They even though I've they've been my friends, you know, the whole time I've been a race car driver, you know, they paid attention to my races. They didn't pay attention to the sport. Now they're interested in the sport. So, I'm an optimist, but I believe that there's an opportunity there for you know all motorsports to to have growth because of one being you know one growing. Dude, I, I, the same thing with all my friends, like never cared that I was a huge NASCAR guy growing up, but because F1 has, has hit this uh, very popular growth level, they all ask me that like, I can't even count the amount of messages I've got from people who asked me the, the differences. <laughs> the comments uh, on TikTok are the best that he gets from the look, people yeah, that I, just watch the show. Parker, we That's do the fun. 
we need you to bring us together because I'm working on the divide every day. Baby. I'm working on the yeah, divide. And I'm here. I'm here for what you're wanting to do. Margaret. And like, so I, I, I try to like, t- I, I can't stop Dale from doing way. Yep, it's, nope, it's fucking nope. hilarious. And He's so NASCAR. Yeah, exactly. So the, the main thing for me is just all of them combined in a ball. It's just cars go fast. Watch it. So that's the way that I'm, I'm trying to approach the, the situation. I love all of it. And I want more of it, but I know it's uh, we're getting close to having to wind down and we were talking about the stick and ball guys and girls. So now for this part of the show, the end of the show, we we're going to bring you into wheelman wagers. All right. Welcome to wheelman wagers. What we're going to do here is we're going to allow you to, uh, to make some picks on stick and ball sports we're going to let all of your fans, all of the racing fans, our ball sport people, ride these bets. Yep. So uh, so are you ready? Okay. So I'm Austin ready. Dillon, we've had Austin Dillon and Ryan Blaney. Uh, both of them went one and two. Blaney has a slight edge. Uh, so technically he's number one, Austin Dillon's number two, because Austin Dillon picked a heavier favorite and lost. Blaney did, did mm. not. So uh, that's where we are right now with those two guys. And I'm pulling up lines right now. Uh, NFL, tell me who's your, you, you got an NFL team, like or, Giants. Or how? I'm a Gi- Giants fan. Oh, ah, okay. You watched that yeah. game with the commanders the other night. Oh yeah, baby. We're going on. We needed to win that. It was big, big win, big win. All right. Love well, it. uh, that hurt me a lot. Cause, uh, that <laughs> late flag killed my bet of the week or bet of the night, bet of the day, whatever you want to call it, but I'm still salty. About I'm getting it. a theme. I'm getting a theme with you, bud. What is that? Anything, that anything good for me is bad for you. In the <laughs> oh, and, and you also forgot the, the, we do two separate jobs too, right? Like the, yeah. the, I'm on the divide. You're on the uh, bring everyone together train and motorsports, but the giants yeah. have a, another big game this weekend at Minnesota, who just completed the greatest comeback in the history of NFL football. You like that? You like that? Uh, so giants at Vikings, the spread is plus four giants over under is 48 giants are plus 170 money line vikings are minus 200 favorites mm-hmm. are you rolling with the giants what do you want to do here you know i always say you can't bet with your heart but and i, I saw that come back vikings that was pretty impressive um i think the whole world was watching but you know i i liked i know we got we lack receivers I know we've got one main player, uh, Barkley there, and Daniel Jones. Though when he shows up and he's fired up, it's he's he'll run it in. He'll just get it done. So I'm gonna go with my heart. The Giants are gonna win. They're gonna go two for two here, and we're gonna propel ourselves directly into being ready for the playoffs. Although we don't have to win this game, which is going against me, because I know we don't have to. But I think it makes it almost impossible for us to miss if we win this game. So I'm gonna say the Giants. Wow. Okay. Love that. Plus 170. Yep. Lock it in. Lock All right. Get in. Ding. Thursday night, bringing you out of college football betting retirement of life. <laughs> it's Air Force. It's Baylor. The spread is three and a half. The over under is 43 and a half. And the money line for Air Force is plus 150. For Baylor, minus 175. Where are we going? Baylor. It's I Baylor. hate to go against the Air Force. I mean, Top Gun. Everything, but I gotta go. With the favorite. That's Baylor, minus 175. Baylor money line, Lock minus it. 175. And I would take that. The money line is three and a half. It's three the and a half. You want to do money? You no, spread no, half. Uh, money oh. line is minus 175. Spread is th- uh, minus three and a half for Baylor. You want to do that? That's right. Spread. Mm, no, I'll just take the. I'll take no. I'm minus 170 money line. Damn, <laughs> dude. All right. Here's another thing. Big F1 guy, not, not an American sport. This is the Armed Forces Bowl. Air Force is in it, <laughs> and you're taking the other team. The theme. Hey, I got a theme with you too, Parker. Hey, right. we uh, got an American coming this year. We got uh, Logan Sargent. Yes, I year. saw that. He Williams. got his super license, right? Unfortunately, not in the best car. But we, you know, it remains to be seen. Yeah. It's cool to see an American back in, in Formula One. Though. Love that. I, yeah. I agree. All yeah. right. So for the final game, we're going to roll with uh, Christmas Day action. You're you're a good affiliate, NBC Sports, Sunday Night Football Classic. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers at the Arizona Cardinals, who are so depleted. And no Kyler Murray out for the season, tore ACL. So the Bucs, the Bucs, yeah, got plenty of time to play Call of Duty now. Uh, Some Warzone (laughs) 2.0. 
Tom Brady and the Bucks are favored by six and a half points. The over under is 41, and they're minus 295 on the money line. So, uh, where are you going to lean on this one with a TB12 as a big favorite? What's the spread? Would six and a that? half. Six and a half. So, the Bucks. I take favored. that bet. Okay. Bucks minus six and a half on the road. Yeah. I like that bet too, actually. I, I actually cannot believe that's even the spread because Arizona. So, you're giving six and a half. Arizona basically correct I yeah. take that one because when it's the, I can't I struggle when it's like so lopsided as that one where it's like you can't you know just going for a winner like that's not gonna work you got to take the spread on that one. wait wait so are you are you taking Tampa or Arizona uh I'm gonna take ta- or Arizona to giving, cover that yeah yeah cover oh yeah. oh shit yeah. oh, I think Tampa Arizona. all right let's roll Plus let's six ride. and a half let's I like that bet I like that bet you know, it is hard in the NFL to blow – like, teams don't blow each other out super often. Like, the, the gap when, is so narrow. What – you know, I mean, they just got to hold them. I, I don't know. I think it's a good one. It's probably a little – you know, seven and a half would be better. I'd like that. But Sports with balls. It. I like it. I'm sure – I'm sure that will change as we get closer. That will be like seven and a half, eight and a half. Who knows? Oh. They figure out. We got it locked in right now. We got it locked in right now. So <laughs> that line good. moves. You're good. You're good. They're probably not they factoring better. Murray, uh, whatever. That's For fine. you, maybe <laughs> yeah. not. For the people, maybe so. Yeah. All right, but this has been fun. Dude, Parker, thanks so much. Cannot wait to to watch you take to the track. Uh, remember, Bristol will be uh, big machine boys. At Bristol, we'll be there for you. You're going to win. We got it locked Wait, in. I wrote it. it down in pencil. Not going to erase it. And you're um, going to be Henderson, too, though. It can be trucks or Xfinity, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Got it. Both. All right. We, yep. we, so I've we've got, got that locked up. What do I have? I'll have three attempts at it next year. That's it. So The master of the win. mountain. Love that. Boom. Boom. Love what that. happens? Love that. That's a shirt. All I'm right. here to By win the way, Bristol. I don't care if it's covered in dirt or not. So. Okay, I'm here for that. By the way, you have some new merch too. Harris Lou and, and the squad at Lou Creative, they got you going good. Yep. Stuff looks great. Go buy that. All right. Appreciate and, it. Uh, and remember, uh, big heart for all motorsports this holiday season. Um, and look at Dale's hat as we exit the show now. So uh, we've remember, seen remember. We, the, Thanks the for having me on, boys. Wait, wait. The one thing we have to talk what? about is the Mark Martin shirt and the Mark Martin yeah. jacket. Totally by accident. Yeah. Look at that. And then the Mark Martin poster. Right. And I got a Valvoline. Uh, this was my when we had the esports team. Yeah, had Valvoline right. sponsor it. This was cool. shout out to Folger Mark. Yep, big Mark Martin energy. I love it. Big we love him. Gucci Mane. <laughs> shout out to you. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys later. This has been Garage Talk with Parker Klegerman. Adios, amigos.